something a little more common, you know? And I'm trying to think of like, what is the next step for viral marketing for the next 10 years? All right. And uh, for many of you that know, uh, the viral marketing plan is to export your entire list, reconnect with it, uh, ask permission to stay in touch with everyone you speak with and add them to your list, schedule a monthly appointment to record two short Q&A educational videos. Who knows, some of them might be holograms, <laughs> right? But, you know, two short messages a month. But the last step is really key, you know, instead of, you know, waiting for your ship to come in, you might want to swim out to it. That's the metaphor is, you know, following up and prioritizing and calling and talking to the people that are clicking the links and engaging with those messages in your database. And we're going to talk about today, obviously, how to hire a calling assistant. And we got Jeff Cohn here just waiting. Say hi, Jeff. Hello. Looking Jeff's, forward to this, Frank. Jeff's just, here. Jeff's just, he is, I'm really good at not talking. Yeah, good job, Jeff. Now, now here's the deal. So there's some trends in the real estate space that I'm seeing. You have um, Opsity that decided, you know, we're not going to pass the lead to the agent. We're just going to call the lead and do a live transfer. They were getting into the calling game. They sold for 200 some million dollars to, to, to Realtor.com. And I think they just switched over to a 35% referral model, right? Um, you have uh, Zillow getting into the, you know, calling game. I was at Zillow's conference and Spencer from stage when he was the CEO said 50% of the people who register on Zillow <laughs> to actually speak with an agent. And these are paying agents on Zillow. Like they're paying for the leads. Don't even get a phone call, you know? Mm -hmm. So Zillow had to get into the calling game, right? I was at the uh, traffic and conversion summit. Uh, that's a big internet marketing thing here in, in San Diego. And I was speaking with someone that was there. And um, the main guy from stage was like, you know, what's the next big marketing thing? You know, this is an audience of a bunch of internet marketers. What's the big next marketing thing? Is it chatbots? Is it social media? Is it, you know, what's the, what's the thing, right? Is a podcast? Where does everyone have to be? And he, I supposedly he asked the audience the question, you know, how many of you actually talk to your customers? <laughs> like just talk to them, right? And, and no one raised their hand. This is an internet marketing crowd, right? And he's like, that's the future. Talking, Talking to customers crazy you know so i'm seeing all these trends of like what do i do at viral to help you guys get business to help you get more business from your database and here's the answer it's calling the database right now you don't have time to do it not consistently and honestly you shouldn't because you can get that that work done for a lot less than what you're worth if you have the resources and the capital for it so what we're going to talk today about jeff i'm kind of setting this up is to really reinvigorate the last step of the core viral marketing plan is look, you, you're sending these messages out, you're sending these videos out. You can actually track who's watching and who's engaging. And wouldn't it be great if they got a call from your assistant, your executive assistant reaching out on your behalf to invite them to an event, to see if there's any questions they have about uh, real estate that you can answer, um, inviting them to an open house, even just asking for a referral. You have all these buyers, but no homes to sell them. Do you know anyone wants to sell their home? Something helpful. And they have a conversation, an intelligent conversation. And if the conversation is a positive one, they pass it back to you. So they're pulling positive conversations out of your database by targeting the people that have recently engaged with your messages. So you can pounce on something a little bit more uh, opportunistic than having to kind of do a lot of the raw calls to find the opportunities. Now, I got to introduce Jeff. Jeff's a great friend of mine. We're both from Omaha, Nebraska. Jeff has built the number one sales team at Berkshire Hathaway, number one agent at in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, hundreds of homes a year, well over 600 homes a year, and has built probably one of the best real estate team models I've seen at a price point that isn't much. What's your average price point, Jeff? 220,000. 220,000, Omaha, Nebraska. It's not San Diego price points, right? Nope. Um, and has built a systems-based team where it's not very people dependent. And he's been able to exit himself out of his team. It's kind of the dream we all have, right? And he has an investment pillar. He has a coaching business. He has this true seventh level business where you have your team, but you have other you know, auxiliary ways of making money. And he really had to systematize, how do I help my agents generate leads or all they're all gonna leave me, yeah. right? And yes, you can spend lots of money online from the lead generators, but that's getting more and more expensive, right? You can try to get your agents to prospect. That's a challenge all the time. It never ends and probably requires a lot of expensive sales management talent to make that happen. But, you know, if you have a database and you're generating business that way and you have your long-term nurtures, maybe you can hire an inexpensive assistant, which is what Jeff did four years ago. 
to start calling and talking to people that are clicking the links. So the story I sent you just stormed into our office. We were in Omaha saying, I cancel. Your service is terrible. I'm getting no business, right, Jeff? Juices. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. I'm like, Jeff, hang on. Wait a minute. Look, man, here's all the people that click the link on your videos. Like these people actually recently engaged in your list. How about we just reach out to them and just maybe just ask them, do you want to buy or sell a house? And we did that. And you identified some opportunities, didn't you? Yep. Lots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let me, let me dive in quick. So yeah. um, I teach from stage often and to our coaching clients and to my agents that there's three main lead sources, SOI, sphere of influence, which is the best. Number two, app on prospecting, just as it just sold expired FISBO. And number three, internet lead gen, Google ads, Facebook, Zillow, homes.com, realtor.com, social media, et cetera. The best lead is sphere. Everyone knows that, but it's shocking to me. The point you made, Frank, people don't want to talk. Agents are scared. They don't want to call past clients. They don't want to take the time doing that and they don't have to. And so that's the strategy we're going to discuss today. So yeah. what we had found, Frank told me in college, he's like, you know, what would be really cool. I was like, what? He's like, what if you didn't have to be dependent on search engine optimization and spend all this money on SEO, you pay for ads, but then you capture all the leads and you no longer need to rely on Google. If you have all the leads in your city, you don't need Google any longer. And I was like, that's insane. How would you ever get that many people? So in the Omaha metro area, there's 330,000 residences. Today in my database, Frank, we have more than 330,000 leads with their phone That's number, email address, all their contact info, every time they've come back out to our website. So using Frank's point and strategy, what we started doing, we obviously did the two videos. We've been with viral forever, I think years. seven years. So we would send the two videos, but I wasn't following up on them. And the reason I wasn't doing it is I had thought of viral as simply a touch point for our overall lead conversion process, but not a touch point in that I would have someone actually call. It would just be another touch. Hey, there's a video. Here's a way we create value. Where I missed the mark was I had all these agents on my team who were putting all their SOI into our CRM. We use Boomtown. doesn't matter which one you use. And then viral gets the list updated every month they email out or every two weeks. What we weren't doing was touching base with each and every person that had Call, clicked on the call to action, the warm leads that are denoted by viral marketing because they weren't my personal sphere. So I thought, oh, I'm not going to have my VA called. Why would I do that? Well, I missed the mark four years ago and Frank scolded me when I came in the office and exploded and said, hey, what the frick? What are we going to do here? And so I said, okay, why, do, why don't I hire a VA? $2,000 a month is what I pay her. She's in the Philippines and we'll talk about strategy with having internal versus external um, assistant callers. And I thought, what if they just called on all these call to actions? And if the lead in our CRM was registered under one of my agents, they would reference that agent name when they called. So they're on a dialer, a Mojo three line dialer. And they would, let's say it's someone calling Frank and it's a lead for Julie on my team. They'd say, Hey Frank, it's, Ju it's, um, so-and-so calling on behalf of Julie with Omaha's Lead real estate groups, wanted to touch base. And then of course we engage and create value. Every phone call has value. Every video has value. Mm -hmm. It could be set them up on automatic email listing updates. It could be something about the market. It could be a reminder that we can do a free and home evaluation, whatever the case might be. They then reference whatever the blog video was about. So, hey, did, you know, they don't say they saw that they had watched it because that's a little intrusive, but they'll say, you know, our most recent blog video was about A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Would you find value if Jeff were to follow up with you and do an in-home listing presentation? And, or do you know anyone thinking about listing? So it's always giving them something. And then, like you said, asking for something. Do you know someone? Have you yourselves considered? Is there anything else Jeff can do for you? You know, always referencing that agent. And from a value standpoint, for the agents on my team to know that there's a virtual caller calling on all of their leads that ever engage with the messaging that we're sending out has, has been invaluable. And from a, a return on investment standpoint, it's over a 10x return easily. Two grand, our average commission in Omaha, which is low for Omaha, is around $6,000. Yeah. So we only need to convert one every quarter to break even. So Jeff has a huge list of lots of internet lead generation over the years of people that have opted in to get his stuff, right? So we need someone full-time to like just constantly work this database all the time. And they'll start with the clicks of people engaging, but I would assume they go wider than that over time. Within the you, CRM, you can see who engages. They call all those leads. Yeah. Anyone so you that works on the website. You have a full-time person. Now, that's in your case when you're at your level, the number one person at Berkshire, they, how many right. agents do you have? 40. Okay, 40. So most of you watching don't need that amount of money of you course. have to spend on labor. But that's so nothing, you guys. I mean, two grand is not a lot. Well, for what you're spending on other things, I'm sure. All right. So let me show you the power of this. Now, many of you, check this out, Jeff. We'll see who actually likes you that came to the webinar. Mm. 
You ready for this? I think everyone's here for you, Frank. Yeah. Well, maybe a few people showed up for you, buddy. All right. <laughs> so this is the email I sent out to get people on the webinar that we're holding right now, right? Send this to you, make sure it was good. They click the link. This is what they read. Now, this is HubSpot. This is what we run viral marketing on. It's a little more expensive CRM. For viral clients, you're using Emma and almost all of the same information that's in here will be available to you as a client. It is available to you as a client, all right? For those of you using Emma, really quick, if you're a viral client, Emma is the email marketing software that we use. And just ask the person you're working with at Viral to uh, get uh, a login for it. So you can actually go to Emma and see, like we purchased this, this is included in your fee. You have all these benefits, but one of the cool benefits is there's an app. So if you go download the metric app, we'll give you a login and you can see the open rate and the click rate and the engagements in real time of your email messages by downloading this app. Just ask the person you're working with to get you to login. All right. Otherwise you'll just email it like normal. Right? Otherwise, you know, a couple of days later after all the clicks come through, we'll send you an email either yeah. way. All right. So just marketing works best when you demonstrate. And since I'm trying to convince you that you should have someone calling your engagements, let me demonstrate maybe how this would work for you. So let's take a look at this. Our database at Viral, and this is over 10 years, is only 4,500 because they're all extremely niche permission-based emails. Very different than a real estate team, but that's how many it went out to. 30% of you opened the email, and this was the click-through rate. And this is in regards to my webinar that you were yeah, promoting, this right? is literally the email I sent out to get people to this, okay. all right? So if I scroll down here, deliverability was great. Not many bounces, few unsubscribes, most importantly, no spam reports. So I didn't get shut down. All right. Now here's what's great. Now what HubSpot gives me, and you can pretty much get this too with Emma, is I can see my top engaged contacts by clicks. Here are the people that clicked the most links and were the most engaged with mm -hmm. the message, Jeff. Here's the opens. Here are the people that opened the emails. Jeff Wheatley really likes this this would be a good person to follow up with. Jeff, maybe you're on here. <laughs> I bet he will be, <laughs> right? These are all the people that engaged. Isn't that cool? And this is cool. Now, I would probably start with maybe having my assistant, since they already know who I am, reaching out to them to see if we can start a conversation. And if the conversation is positive, they pass the conversation back to me. Got it? But let's go a little bit deeper. Let's take a look at the other information that's available to you to call your opens and clicks. So let's just take a look here. I sent out 4,500 emails, got most of them delivered. We had 1,300 opens and 102 clicks. Now for what it's worth, I suppressed a whole bunch. These are all the people not engaging that have not been opening the emails. I just don't send to them. That keeps my deliverability higher. But regardless, let's take a look at the 102 people that took time out of their day to actually click and learn about this webinar. You might see yourself on here. Isn't that cool? I mean, someone should be calling these people to have a conversation about getting some done for you calling done, I would think. Right, Jeff? Yep. I mean, there's a lot of strategies too, you guys, that you can implement with this. If you send out an invite for people to go to your open house, you could actually follow up with a phone call to every single person and invite, you know, and say, hey, I really want to invite you to the just open to, house. Just to move it along. It's identifying. Yep. So instead of me having to randomly call a bunch of cold call homeowners for a just listed call, Right. Or a pound expires in a market where there's 30 agents trying to get a hold of them, right? You know, how could I maybe get some business that's a little bit different? Well, look, you know, I basically kind of drilled down 102 people that were in this message, but let me give you one more metric that's possible. Out of, out of 5,000. So instead of having to call, have a, hire a dialer that calls 5,000 people, you're yeah. only calling on the 100 that are most interested, which is the whole mindset and who to follow up with. When your assistant, your calling assistant reaches out referencing your name, they're going to know what that is. So by you doing the marketing, it lowers the skill set necessary and gives the calling assistant some branding to start the conversation and give that, that person might give your calling assistant the time of day. Yep. Right. Frank, now, here's what's throw one other idea in there. A lot sure. of people get worried about the handoff. I don't allow my personal assistants to schedule appointments with me because so often I felt like that appointment that they schedule wasn't truly ready. I want to have that phone call. And a lot of people that are still servicing want to have that phone call. I created a link on Calendly and you can do it in HubSpot, but most of you don't have that. Calendly um, allowed me to create a specific URL. So it's schedulejeffcone.com. If you guys want to see an example, it's pretty cool. And so I have my virtual caller give that link to someone if they do want to have a call with me or a follow-up meeting with me. 
they'll say, okay, we'll just schedule a time with Jeff. Here's the link. And they then will ask, would you like me to schedule that for you? Will I have you on the call? And they'll pull up my, my Calendly link, schedulejeffcone.com. I love they'll it. They'll go click in. They'll ask the person for the contact information. I and then it. you'll, the agent, will get an email verification the second that appointment gets set up. And you can have your virtual caller add it to your calendar. So here's what I'm getting at. If you're ignoring the open and click report, what's wrong with you? Those are great leads, right, Jeff? Well, we're too busy, Frank. I know. We're juggling so many things. So how is viral going to help <laughs> well, us, Frank? I'll get there. Hang on. Let me show something There is something at the end. If you're on this wondering yeah, where yeah, this yeah. is going, there is well, something very I have a, I have a go. test group, and I mentioned this. There's a test group where I'm looking to build a call center, a communication room, I'll call it, where we are actually going to make these calls for you on behalf of you as an assistant. And it's free to start. If you're interested in being a part of the test group to have someone make these calls, email me, frank at getviral.com. And you'll be working with Allison as we get about 20 of you to start making these calls. And I want to start getting the metrics. I want to start getting the dials and the contact rates and the conversations and record the conversations and come up with the messaging where I can say, look, here's the opportunities in the business sitting inside that list. And then eventually we're going to, we're going to sell uh, an add on to the core program to actually consistently execute this, not at the level Jeff has for two grand a month, but something a lot more affordable because yeah. you don't need all that calling. But let me Great. show you something else. Hang on real quick. Yep. Some of the email marketing, this will be rolling out soon, but you can actually track not only everyone who opened it, this is HubSpot, but soon you're going to start seeing who read it, skimmed it or glanced at it. So I can actually see not only did I get 102 clicks, but 419 people spent at least eight seconds reading that email. So I got some good engagements there. So I want you to see what email marketing does by drilling down your database to some people that might be open to having a conversation with a calling assistant. All right. So hopefully at this point of the webinar, you're going, you know what? Maybe a calling assistant might make sense. I like it. And uh, maybe there's some business there, right? So let's talk about now, um, how do you kind of manage and lead a calling assistant? You had someone doing this for four years for you, Jeff, backing up and calling all the well, engagements in your database. With the viral list, I started a call center in my office. The first year I launched my team, I had five internal salespeople. And then we hired a third party company over in the Philippines. And that's what gave me the idea to start my own call center in the Philippines. So but, yeah, I well, had a lot of experience with calls, callers. So, so here's the deal. Just so you guys know, Jeff and I, uh, we, we always try to figure out how do we get this calling done for us. It started off by probably calling the clicks. Then it's like, let's just start mojoing through all the archives. That's not what we do here at Viral. Right. Okay. Uh, then it's like, let's just buy the phone numbers of every single homeowner in the entire city and just call them all if they ask they want, if they want to. to uh, every quarter. Yeah, if they want to sell their house. And that turned into a company called 1,000 Calls a Day that Jeff and I are part owners in, which is totally not the scope of this webinar. But I thought I'd right. share with you the progression of that is that we hired uh, individuals in the Philippines for about $4 an hour talent just to call all these homeowners to see if they wanted to sell their home. And just for what it's worth, Jeff, last year in Omaha, Nebraska, how many homes did you purchase or wholesale? Oh, uh, over a hundred. A hundred. A third how came from callers, 33. Of 33 those. came from outbound. And mm -hmm. of the hundred <laughs> deals that you purchased, how many did you keep as holds? 50. In one year. We use the profit off the other 50 to cover and our debt obligation. all these homes at a 30% discount to market value for the most part, right? Yep. There's no way you would get that off the MLS for deals. No, so, not at all. So Jeff and I understand the power of calling assistance. Starts with the opens and clicks. That's what viral is going to do. All right. But this could expand to calling through the whole database, the archives all the time. Right. Frank, let me make a comment real quick. Everyone's always nervous. Like who's going to hold them accountable? Who's going to train them? What systems are they going to use? Yeah. That's the beauty with what you're about to say is I'm sure viral is going to take all that responsibility yeah. over, but where the agent's concerned and where viral will, will help mitigate this is you don't want your message to be um, inconsistent. You want to make sure the script they're using, the things they're saying are relevant and applicable to your team in your marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we've done to help fix that is every day that our caller goes to make calls, they have to call the agent we have on duty. And they have a conversation. Our caller in the Philippines calls the agent that's on duty at 10 a.m. in the morning. 
to let them know they're starting their shift and to talk about what calls they're going to make and what scripts they're going to use. And then at the end of the day, in addition to the end of day report that they email out, they call the agent and say, you know, they always call you boss in the Philippines. So they'll say, Hey boss, just got done with my calls. I made 737 dials today. I had this many connects. I talked to these people. This is how it went. Thank you so much for the opportunity to make calls for you. So I make sure that there's that communication and I'd recommend the same thing. Build a relationship of trust with your caller. Even if it's an internal sales agent or a virtual assistant, make sure they know you, like you, trust you. They'll work harder for you if you do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But you, you want them to understand your culture and, and your team. And I feel like there's too much of a disconnect. Now, a let's, I, I have to step back here because this is so normal to you because you work with foreign talent. Mm -hmm. Your caller for the two grand a month is in the Philippines. Yeah. So you have somebody in the Philippines. And I mean, I want you to think about limiting beliefs. Okay. Calling your database. Yep. And you might think I would never do that. But you've been doing that successfully for two years and she's very talented or longer than that. And I'm friends with them. Like I have relationships. Yeah. They are, when they call someone, they're not in the Philippines. They're in Omaha. Sure. The act, they act well, as they're calling from a 402 Omaha. number. And exactly. Who knows? Sure. Right? They're part of my team. Hey, I'm calling on behalf of Jeff Cohn's team. Jeff asked me to call you. So what we're going to do here at viral is I'm actually building a call center. Uh, let me actually pull this up for you in the States. Which probably in Omaha, right? Yep. Actually it's next door. This is what it looks like now. It looks like crap. Which is all uh, it needs to be. <laughs> exactly. I should leave it like this. Our callers have dirt floors in the Philippines. <laughs> they I'm they not, do. I, no, they really they have do. have chickens. We'll have like calls with them and I'll hear chickens and yeah, goats. I mean, this would work just fine, but uh, not quite. We are actually going to build it out. So it looks a little more like this. Yeah. Okay. With the standing desks and everything else. All right. But um, can you give me some ideas of the scripting and maybe how you handle the tracking of the calls. Do you record them to the disclosure on a quarter line? Do you listen in? How do you know this caller calling your database, your friends, your family, yeah. your parents? Hold on, your past clients, your current clients, current clients. Yep. Might be, right? Yep. They're not murdering your list and ruining your brand. Right. So well, first off, I wouldn't, manage yep, I wouldn't let them make a call if I thought they were going to do that. It's all about offering value. It's not a sales call. So that's the first important fact. It's all about giving something. Everyone wants to be given something. When you mail someone, when you email someone, when you create your video, and when you call them, you're giving them something. So, hey, I'm calling to give you this today. And giving could be information or it could be an actual item. So first off is when you scrub your, I mean, I don't know if you're going to call and hire a virtual assistant. Of course, Frank's going to take care of a lot of this for you guys. But if you were calling, you know, hiring a third party person, part of the, um, recruiting process for that would be hearing practice calls. So I've had countless hundreds, thousands, if not, you know, of training calls and practice calls with the caller. So I know how they need to sound on the other end. It's not a, as much about the words they say, that's the scripting, but it's about the way they say the words. It's their intonation. It's the speed of conversation. So I make decisions on who I want to hire based on that, but you mm -hmm. asked how we track it. So in our system, we're using Boomtown and we integrate the Mojo call dialer inside of Boomtown. And so they can go into whatever category our agent on duty that day has specified for them to go into. And we can track on the back end of Mojo and inside of Boomtown, how many of those leads within each of the agents indicated lists have been dialed. We can also record the dials. We don't do the recording. It takes up too much bandwidth, but we have the option of having them choose their top two calls a day. They can send an email with the attached recorded call if the agent wants to hear examples of their best call or their worst call. That's mm -hmm. up to each agent. And then in the day, they send the report. How many calls, how many contacts, how many leads? I know because we've done this for so long. If they're not highlighting leads, they're not making calls. So I know exactly what to expect from every different type of outbound call as far as the results we should get. So like in the flipping business that you referenced earlier, we know we should get one executed contract a month from each virtual caller. And I have three full-time callers for that business, three houses a month, 36 houses a year that we acquire. Um, so if I, if we go two months with no lead, I know that they're probably not making the calls or they're not making enough dials from a cheating standpoint. You can't get too caught up in that. Look at the results, be, be more focused on what kind of positive results are you getting than being worried that the person's stealing your time. So to, to hold things accountable, let me go a little bit deeper on this. So the phone system that we're going to use is called air call. All right. So you call through Mojo, which is fine because you're yep. doing more bigger numbers through the whole big database. Yep. But we're going to be calling the database, the clicks and the engagements using a phone call system called air call. And when you call through that, every single call is recorded and they'll say in the script, Hey, this is a so-and-so calling and we have a Jeff Cohn who asked me to call you. 
on recorded line and yada, 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 as long as it's disclosed. Okay. And what's really nice about this call, it has a whole call center feature built in. So I can actually see the dials and the calls and the contacts and listen to the call recordings. It's all logged and the pricing is pretty reasonable. I can get a seat for about 50 bucks a month and they're all be calling for that. It's called a soft phone through the computer, right? One of the ways that we're going to hire to help streamline our hiring process is when somebody applies, we want to kind of see how well they communicate. Uh, Loom is a way where somebody can quickly download this in the browser. And I would say, hey, just make me a video on why you want to work here. And they'll download this and make a video and I can just press play and see how I do the interview. This is a pretty cool thing, all right? So with this calling service uh, that I want to add on to viral is you're gonna come up with a message of the month. This might be something you can try, Jeff. But a message of the month would be, um, let's say you're just, let's say for the sake of argument, you're holding an event, some community appreciation event, client appreciation event, uh, maybe an open house, a mega open house at a cool listing you know, wine and cheese and a band, who knows, right? But it's, it's an excuse to reach out. Mm -hmm. So the message would be, hey, I'm so-and-so. And, -so and uh, you know, uh, Jeff Cohn asked me to reach out. And the reason I'm calling is I see, I see you subscribe to our helpful videos that we send about, about the Omaha real estate market and direction home prices in the community. But the reason for my call is Jeff wanted me to call and personally invite you to this event and want to know if I could email you a link where you can register. The event maybe costs X and there's a code there to make it free. Would you like to come? We'd love to see you, right? And that would be done over the phone through a voicemail. Uh, if they don't talk to them, we'll actually fire off an email with the same message. So I know the email address is good because they've used it, right? And I may not have the phone number. Are you gonna drop voicemail? Uh, I don't know, we'll test it. So I'll, I'll share that strategy quickly. Yeah. It's one of the, I think the best parts of Mojo is I can create the pre-recorded voicemails and so can all of my agents. And then the virtual caller can drop that person's voicemail. So nine out of 10 calls don't get picked up. We have about a 10% contact ratio off the outbound call. So 90% of my database who has clicked on these, these ads get my voicemail and they think I'm the one that tried calling, which I think sure. holds a little bit more weight than having my assistant call. Yeah, so we're gonna test that out. So the whole goal is you're sending your videos out, people are clicking and engaging. You have somebody reaching out on your behalf with the phone call, hopefully there's a phone number or just an email message, leave a message or not to test, to start a conversation with something of value. Mm -hmm. And you'll have your dials and your contacts and if the conversation goes in a positive way or whatever it may be, you get a report of here's all the conversations I have and here are the outcomes and even some of the call recordings. If you want the call recordings, they can attach those as well so you actually hear the calls as long as they're disclosing they're calling on a recorded line, right? So the goal is I know that with, you gotta have the right training and the right people and all those things. But if you, if we actually get these people called, I bet you, and I'll have the data with the test group that we could pull out a couple conversations a week that get passed to you that are some opportunities, whether they're now or later, but it's a, it's a good opportunity to make some money. Uh, either someone that can refer you or wants to come to an event or whatever it may be. Do you have any idea of the calls now, Jeff, of how many your person pulls out that is sent over to agents? Yeah, there's, about you, five, there's five a day. We call them highlighted leads. So we don't know what the thing is that person's going to want. They might be a potential buyer. They might be a potential seller. They yeah. might want to come to an upcoming event. And then we also use this exact strategy for outbound rec for recruiting agents. And we have a whole separate process through yeah. viral marketing we pay extra for to market to agents. And we have this, all the value stuff, all the same stuff we implemented. So probably about five a day. And I get CC'd on that email every single day. So every night they send their end of day report, they call the agent that's working the leads that day. And then they say how many leads they highlighted. They copy all the notes that they had already added to the CRM inside that email. So my agents absolutely love it because all they have to do is once a month, they get that email from the VA. They go through, they call all those five opportunities. They try to set up appointments and service that lead depending on what that lead wants. The challenge is everyone wants something different. And so it's your job. The onus is on us to decide what it is that they want. Like you mentioned having an event. Some people just want to be loved on. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. They refer business to people that they know, like, and trust. So you can't always look at these leads as someone you're going to make a commission off of. More important to me, Frank, is looking at the lead as someone I want to have refer business back to me. Yeah. So with the way you engage your leads, don't think of them as potential buyers and sellers. Think of them as your number one lead source and, for, for referrals. And this is so important. So let's talk briefly about the three cultures and the three styles of calling that are in real estate. And there's nobody specializing in database calls. I want to be that company. Now, 
So you have inbound lead follow-up. Rocker Box over uh, that, that Josh Cunningham runs that we both know very well. They do awesome. He has, does, does a wonderful job. He has a bunch of uh, college students for the most part and graduates, recent graduates that come on in there and they work four hour shifts. So I think he has like three, four hour shifts. So he covers most of the day. They'd call for two hours, take a break, call for two yeah. hours and go home. And they're basically logging into a CRM and just basically doing the 10 days of pain calling and trying to convert the leads that are out in into weeks. an agent. Yep. Right. Those are a very specific type of call trying to find the business. That's a numbers game. That's a numbers Short game. Short conversation. It. Yep. Yes. Right. The other type of calling is you have outbound. There's companies out there that will prospect expireds and FISBOs and pass you appointments. There's yep. companies out there like the thousand calls business that Jeff and I are involved in that just basically just pass you leads to people that said they're interested in having an agent call about yep. getting an offer on their home. And they're done usually in mass, you know, like lots and lots of calls. You know, that's a very specific type of call, very different from inbound lead follow-up. You wouldn't want that person talking to your sphere no. of influence. No. No. And you probably don't want your ISA that is following through the buyer leads doing the same either because they're in this right. attitude of like, I got to find business. Right. The database is a customer service call. Got it? Yep. it? It's a customer service call. It's a different culture. It's your executive assistant reaching out on your behalf with some type of helpful message, just trying to start a conversation and maybe see you, what needs can I help solve? Follow me? Because they're going to be calling a smorgasbord of types of people. You know, so they got to be kind of agile. They have to kind of know things. And that's why... Yep. That's what we're going to do here at Viral. And it's going to be really cool. We can pass a couple of opportunities from the database that are in, that are identified from all the digital marketing over to somebody. All right. So let's talk about uh, the cost of hiring somebody. So this is talent that uh, you can get for an hourly wage, 10 to $12 an hour. And I think for most of our clients that are getting, you know, anywhere between, you know, 20 to 100 clicks on a message, you you only need a couple hours a week a couple hours a week of time of someone that can specialize in this, right? Just calling the clicks, right? The, the most opportune um, engagements. $40, $50 a week, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, a couple hundred dollars a month of labor. You know, you could go to Upwork and find a part-time, uh, usually a stay-at-home uh, mom that's kind of held hostage by their kids. They can't leave with the kids asleep. They'll make some extra money or a military spouse that where they just got restationed somewhere and they're stuck in the house is that there's a, there's a, it's a good market for jobs that wouldn't mind making non sales calls, just right. helpful calls with a message just to start some conversations as a customer service rep, as an executive assistant, right. that would be happy. I mean, just happy to, to do work for about 10 to 12 bucks an hour for that job working from home. Right. And the cost of this could be just a couple hundred dollars a month. And essentially that's going to end up being the cost of what it will cost you to hire our calling service upgrade. When I figure out the pricing of that, you know, somewhere probably around two to three hundred dollars extra a month. I can get all sign, those clicks calls most up, of the people. Frank. I know how much this costs you guys to try to reinvent this wheel. Even if you had a part-time person, you're going to be at least a thousand dollars a month. And it, and then the other challenge is a lot of people listening to this think, think well, I'll just have my admin person do it. No. Your admin person is not, not going, going to do this, and they're not Gladys, going to do it. Gladys job. isn't going to make the calls. That's what I always say. You know, it, it's always you go back and you give your leads to Gladys and right. you know, has time and wants to. So go plus, like it. I had the call center in Omaha with five college students. Then we have the call center now overseas. You don't want to manage a call center. You don't want to manage a call person. You no. don't want to hold them accountable. No. Let somebody else do okay. it. It's a no brainer. And for viral, this is a break even. It's not like they're profiting. They're no. profiting by helping you be more successful. It's, a, it's a retention leads. thing. It's to keep you guys around to keep you on the core program. I got to get yeah. you leads. So we do a really good job at like, you know, tracking our net promoter score. People are happy. But being happy doesn't mean they're actually in business. Right. And to, to maintain the, the competitive advantage of delivering on the promise of getting sales from a database, somebody, you need a calling assistant calling on your behalf. So I bet you, I don't know the exact price, and we're putting together this test group totally free. Let's see what happens. All right, I'm going to take the risk on the labor, put it all together and test it out. But uh, probably for an extra couple hundred bucks a month. That seems about right. I can get all your clicks called. And what's really cool too, I also have to say this, you, you see a lot of people clicking the same emails. So you don't want to be calling that person <laughs> without referencing the previous conversation because it's maybe one of your clients watching all your stuff. Right. So if your assistant's calling out and not doing a little bit of research on the person, you know, you're going to look dumb or not 
than you know what you're doing. Frank, okay. are we opening this up for questions? There's so yeah, many people are. listening oh. live right now. I haven't seen any questions posted. Oh, so many people. Um, Ask us some questions. I love answering qu something challenging. We talked on a million things already in yeah. like 30 minutes, true Frank Closet style. Thank you. If you have any questions, please ask. But what I'm getting at is we're going to have a CRM. So whenever we talk to somebody in your database on your behalf, we're logging that contact in the notes in CRM. And the goal is before you make a call, you spend three minutes on research. So before you actually reach out, we're going to spend three minutes on research. When did we call them last? What are the notes? What did they click on? Maybe a quick Google search. Who is this person? You know, whatever. Right. And then they reach out with that call. So for example, if the same person keeps clicking their links, your assistant will be referencing the previous call. On top of that, we're not going to call anyone if we've spoken with them in the past 30 days. That's important. So if we spoke with them in the past 30 days, you skip the call. That means it has to be logged into CRM, right? And if you have a message of the month, every time they're called, it's a new message that way. Frank, Patrick it, Sullivan's asking, do we, log, do we log for them in their CRM, whatever no. CRM they're using? We're it's gonna all going to be in... Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna have a totally separate CRM. So we set up an integration with Zapier. So when the link is clicked inside Emma, it pushes the email into a spreadsheet. And basically, in this call center, is essentially it's gonna be this real time. We generate about fifteen. Let me give the math. We generate about fifteen thousand clicks across all of our clients a month. All right. If I divide that by twenty working days a month, Monday through Friday, that's about seven hundred and fifty clicks a day. A full-time calling assistant, if they're doing precise, researched, intelligent, you know, research the contact, what was the last conversation, what do they click, do some homework, make an intelligent call, like not mm -hmm. blasting through 1,000 calls, right? Um, we'll get through about 50 attempts a day. So if I had 15 people full-time making 50 attempts a day, I can get through the clicks of every single one of our clients. That's the math more likely it'll be 30 part-time people working four hour shifts than a full-time person. But that's gonna be the call center. 30 part-time people is kind of the idea. Now, could you set this up, Greg asked in the Philippines? Sure, we'll test that. There's actually three options. First option is you put them in an actual call center environment in America, in our office, in our culture, right next door, right? and see how that goes. By the way, out of Omaha, which you hear Frank and I speaking, there's no accents there's at no all. Accents. Yeah, so that's one option, got it. Next option, hire someone who works from home in the States. So you have no um, facilities cost, right, to cover, which the facilities cost in Omaha is not that much. I mean, I can get that space I showed you guys earlier for like 1200 bucks a month, <laughs> all right? Um, the third option to lower your labor cost in about half, it'll cut your labor cost in half, is putting it overseas. Yeah. You don't so want I, these types of calls overseas. So I got the three, I got the three options. There's options there, right? But we're going to start with the best option. And here's my answer for Greg. And it's a great question. And I'm using a caller in the Philippines. She's done great, but I've spent years and years and years training her. So she sounds and speaks like a person from Omaha, Nebraska. The challenge is getting that Filipino call person to be able to be at that point where you feel like they're actually in your office or they sound like they're actually in your office. And for me, it might save you half. So instead of 300 a month, you're spending 150 a month. The difference of the 150 of what you might lose one lead a year isn't worth going overseas. That's the way I think of it. Our commissions are so big that it's silly of us not to be taking advantage of this strategy and or any strategy that comes to lead generation because our you win one deal a month or a quarter with most lead sources and you get your positive ROI. Yeah, I wanna answer Patrick here. Um, the CRM we're going to use for uh, tracking all this is we're just going to have a separate instance of HubSpot. So we run our company on HubSpot. That's what I showed you earlier. Our company knows that we're just going to have a separate instance of it. And every client we're calling for is going to have a list. So whenever we speak with somebody in your database, we're just going to put them into this HubSpot, log the notes, got it, and tag it as you. So that way, you know, before we actually call someone, we're just going to search for that individual in HubSpot and see when was the last time we spoke with them and what were the notes under your list. Yeah. Got it. And if it was in the last 30 days, we skip them. And if they're in there, it means we spoke with them before. Only contacts are going to be in there. Got it. I can actually reference the notes for the next call, which is going to help deal with if you're just blindly calling your clicks and you don't keep notes, you're going to be calling the same person. <laughs> like, dude, you spoke with me last week. Right. Oh, I forgot. You know, 
You Real quick too, Frank, this makes it a lot easier just to have everything in one CRM. It's a huge pain if our VAs are working for four or five different clients on the same shift for them to have to log into yeah. Real Geeks, no. FirePoint, Conversion, Sync, no. Boomtown, it's insane. So it's not like you're gonna be getting 50 highlighted leads a day. It should only take you maybe an hour or even a half hour a, a month to go in and take off of the email, go into Real Geeks or whatever the CRM that you use. Yeah, if there's any if there's any meaningful notes, you'll be emailed those every single day of what the calling assistant was able to pull out of there for opportunities for you to follow up with. Yeah. Right. So look, dude, your your calling assistant's pulling out five opportunities a day. That's awesome. That passed to your agents. And this is a really great value add of you know why someone's going to work on your team. I mean, all your agents submit their own databases and send the content out, and then they're calling to find something. Yeah. And you know, the agent that comes works for you isn't going to have the system in place. And when they come work for you, the system's there. All right. So oh, Frank, Mark, real quick, Mark Ramsey asked, um, from an engagement standpoint with realtors in your database, a lot of people have a lot of agents that sign up for, you know, the, the blog oh, email yeah. that goes out and they just yeah. kind of want to keep tabs of what your team's doing. I know my team uh, has probably hundreds of agents on there. Number one thing to offer when it comes to recruiting other agents is bringing them into your office to get value. For us, our value is the trainings and accountability meetings. And so I actually, if you look, go to omahaselite.com, click on blog, and there's two drop downs. One's client blog and the other one's recruiting blog or career blog. And it has 12 different value add topics that I would discuss and or um, send video content out about regarding how we built our team and how that benefits that potential recruit. But my mm -hmm. number one thing would just be inviting them to an event. And it could be like charity events right now in the Midwest. You guys probably have heard about all the flooding. It's been horrible. So we're doing a lot of charity stuff right now. Recruits would want to come to that. Clients would want to come to that. Past clients would want to come to that. Anyone in your SOI would want to come to that. So it's an event that's not specific to just one niche. You can invite everyone to it. So let me give you just a couple of reasons to reach out really quick. So what are some of the messages of the month? Uh, the easiest one is you're just reaching out to see if they have any questions. So for example, hey, I'm the, this is, you know, Jane, I'm the executive assistant to Jeff. He asked me to reach out to you. I, you know, thank you, by the way, for subscribing to watching our videos. We really appreciate you. Um, you know, do you have any questions about real estate that Jeff may be able to answer? You know, the yield, yield curves inverted for the, the recession might be here. The Fed didn't raise rates. There's uncertainty with home prices. Is there anything you'd like to know when it comes to real estate here? Uh, I can take your question, pass it on to Jeff, and we can get you an answer. Something like that. That's a really easy one. And then after that, I'd probably say inviting to an event. You can also just reach out with a straight up referral script and I'll have all these tested, you know, Hey, you know, there's not a lot for sale. That's at a good price point at this range. Do you know anyone who wants to sell their home? I got all these buyers looking for to help some people out, you know? So that's the idea guys. If you're interested in the calling group test, there's no call to action to give me money. Not yet. I want proof. <laughs> Frank, I want to do together. it. Great, you're in. So email me because I'll forget. Okay. Even this. Frank at get viral, G E T V Y R A L dot com goes right to me. And you're going to work with Allison in our office, our general manager, to put this together, to test this out, to see how it goes. And here's what's great you're going to have a message of the month we help you write. That's so your calling assistance on message. Okay. All the calls will be recorded and disclosed, and you can listen to the call recordings. You'll have a report of who they spoke with and what opportunities were pulled and passed over to you. It's all going to be held accountable because one of the fears everyone has, if I have someone calling through my database, talking to my clients, they're going to call one of your million dollar listings that's being difficult, right? They better know how to handle it. Got it? And that's going to be one of my goals is when I build out this uh, communication room, Jeff, not a call center. It's the communication room you like that. Yes. Beautiful. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. They communicate in that room. I'm yeah. going to go down and talk to those people once in a it's, while. It's, I'm it's, communicate the, with them. it's the communication room, right? Love it. Right? Great. No, who wants to work in a call center? So that's what we're going to put together. So see if there's any other questions. Uh, how do I get in touch with Jeff? Jeff. Oh, Hey, let me, uh, uh, let me, so let me monetizing my time. Yeah, I know. So let me, <laughs> I know you love it. So let me show you guys something. So Jeff, very quick story. Jeff came to me and said, Frank, how do I recruit agents? I said, well, you want to bring them to your team meetings. And then he was like, well, Frank, not a lot of people want to come to my office because I'm in a Berkshire Hathaway office and people, the eyebrows are going to go up. And I said, well, let's start live streaming them and recording them and putting them online. And people started watching them. And then people outside of Omaha started watching his actual team trainings. And it actually turned into a coaching company. And you actually 
pay and what for you and for your agents to sit in on the actual training that Jeff provides to his uh, agents as well as local agents for recruiting, but also nationally now. And he's added other services too, where there's now, you know, more one-on-one support and so on and so forth. Okay. But not only is that available, it's really interesting how his recruiting actually turned into a full-blown coaching company. Jeff knows how to run a team. Okay. This is just one little aspect of viral helping him with the calling assistant. We actually have an event coming up too in Omaha, Nebraska. We're both from, all right. It's right next to the college world series. If you guys are any baseball fans here, it's from June 24th to 26th this year, I will be speaking and I will will most likely be speaking on the calling assistant. I'll touch on the viral program, but I'm going to really drive home the calling and the results, hopefully from the calling test. Won't that be great? Right. So what else do you want to share, Jeff? What do people need to know about getting involved with you? Yeah. So if you come out to the team building summit, which as Frank indicated is June 24th to June 26th, we're taking everyone to the championship game of the college world series as part of our ticket sale. So we're going to buy you all tickets to see the championship game on Tuesday night. Um, Frank will be speaking at the event. We're going to do some really awesome things for the VIPs front row seats. We're going to sell anyone that's a viral client our $497 VIP ticket for 297. So when you sign up there, just sign up at the 297 price, but we'll give you all the perks. Of and just mention you're with you're a viral client, which you'll check. Yep. All right. Um, also with the coaching, if you're not already being coached, you guys, this is modern coaching for the modern agent. It's in group coaching. It's eight hours of content a month for an individual agent for 97 bucks a month. There's nowhere else I have seen in the industry that offers this high of level training for an individual agent for that price point. And then for the team leader, it's $9.97 a month, which gives you unlimited seats in the agent product, as well as four additional hours of coaching in a group setting uh, for the team leader specifically with two hours of Q&A for both myself and my direct report, Andy. So it's a net total of 14 hours of content a month, all recorded live out of the studio, which was Frank's idea. I put a $50,000 studio in my office in Omaha, and then it's all recorded as well. So the day you join, you'll have 104 hours of agent content and 52 hours of team leader content available to you day one. And it's a month to month contract. So if you want to consume all that content the next three weeks and then fire us, we're totally okay with that. But our hope is that we build enough value that you choose to stay with us month after month. So you can do Q and a. Yep. And if you want to come out to Omaha and hang out with us, it'll be a good time. It's Omaha, Nebraska. It's nice and cheap. It's beautiful in the summer. You guys, (laughs) it's not great here in the winter in this in June. It's a great time. So come check it out. Yeah. So, um, I just wanted to say, are there any other questions about, I want to deliver on the promise of a calling assistant entry level wage, probably for most of you hiring on contract, you could go to the Philippines. That'll be about five bucks an hour in the States, 10 to 12. You only need a couple hours a week. All right. We kind of talked about having the messaging to send out. We talked about how to hold the calls accountable with air call or some type of calling system that would give you the optics into that. You know, well, you could even do what I did early at viral uh, when I had my calling assistant to help me set appointments for me doing uh, sales presentations or consultations. Um, I just set up a second computer sitting right here and had air call. And I could literally see in real time <laughs> them making their calls. And I could listen in in real time. I'd have a second headset. I had one headset like this, another one on. I could listen in because I was paranoid because I spent a fortune, you know, trying to generate that interest in the first place. Right. Uh, you actually, air call will give you those, those optics and make that available. All right. Uh, we got the links in here. No other questions. Jeff, I think we're done. We're yeah. done. We can, I mean, we're here. There's 30 people still. If you guys have questions about events coming up. I think, I think we delivered on the promise of how to hire free. a calling assistant. I think everyone's empowered to be able to do it on their own if they don't want to spend $200 a month, yeah, which to me is a complete no-brainer. I love it, Frank. I think it's a great strategy. I think it's going to be a huge value add for those viral clients that choose to take advantage of it. And it would be a no-brainer to be in the test group of 20 people. Yeah. I'm assuming you're lim- limiting it to the first 20. Yeah, 20. So essentially, if you were on this webinar today. I don't I don't, I don't, don't have the labor to do. It'll be on 20. I got to charge I, after that. I already emailed you as well, by the way. And I, and I think someone made a comment. They, they did too. And they yeah. have a fun. Will you read the subject line, please? I think oh, uh, there's a subject Gregory line. Schwab says you'll enjoy my email subject line. I don't know if he wants us to take that public, but hey, he mentioned it, so I think we do share oh, it. Oh, he emailed me a subject line. Got it. Okay, I'll have to take a look at it. Look at my emails. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you for coming to webinar. I appreciate it. Frank at getviral.com. Seriously, it's free. I just I'm doing need it. The data. I, I own a so freaking call center, so and I'm still so doing I, it. So I can sell it because that's what our clients need to get results. That's the next yeah. step of marketing. It's not a better video. It's not, it's not really 
follow up with the leads. There's diminishing marginal returns from more internet marketing. It's going to be the one-on-one conversations. That's all I got. You guys have a great weekend. Jeff, you rock. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.